Are you ready to meet your maker? Because a judge does not throw someone in prison. It's the choices that we as human beings make that lead us into that situation. A judge is just doing their job. How can you say God is not merciful? He's merciful enough to take on your burden. He's merciful enough to take on your charge so that you do not have to pay the price. If God just acquitted you of all your charges, that wouldn't make him merciful. That would make him a liar and that would make him a transgressor of his own law. A judge can't just set you free. That would be corrupting the law. That's why God, the righteous judge, has given you an outway. He's given you a leeway. And that's in Jesus' name. Because Christ paid the bail. I said this earlier, how can we be so close to the sun that we don't burn? How can we be so far from the sun that we don't freeze? How come we just came together from rocks bangling together? It don't make sense. If you believe something created, if you believe nothing created something, then you're just as delusional as what you think I am. If you believe that nothing created the existence that we call planet Earth today, if you believe that, the Bible says a fool says in his heart there is no God. The Bible says a fool says in his heart there is no God. Look at creation, how the trees are here to give us oxygen. Look at the sun, how it allows the, the plants to grow. This was not made by a big bang. It needed one who was outside of space, time and matter to create all these things. And you can block off your ears, but you will be in tears when it comes to the day of judgment. You know, some people that like, uh, come out here, they like to say, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, yeah. Nice. Still gonna pay the price though. Nice. <laughs> Don't come out here and I just told you Jesus loves you, why does he love you? He loves you because you're his child, he loves you because you're his creation and he wants you to be with him forever. But if I could just keep telling you that Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, when you don't know how to repent, when you don't know how to seek him and have a genuine relationship with him, you're gonna look at me and you're gonna be like, but I listened to that guy, he said Jesus loves you. You see, Christianity ain't, it ain't a religion. It's a personal relationship with your maker. It's a personal relationship. I would not let you into my home unless you knew someone in my residence. That's why the Father will not let you into his kingdom unless you know his son. You need to know Christ intimately. God is both infinite and intimate, both personal and eternal. On Sundays, you can't just be going to church, man. You see, in a relationship, you can't just meet that person once a week because it'll make them feel a bit sad. You can't just talk to a person once a week because it'll make them think that they don't love you. So when you come to Christ, you need to be in a relationship. You need to be committed. You've taken on the ring and now you're in a marriage. And there is so much benefits that comes from the goodness of the Lord. Please repent. Repent is to turn away from your sins. Repent is to turn away from lawlessness and wicked ways. Many people can say repent, but they don't understand what it means. Repentance is to turn away from sin. It's to turn away from breaking God's law. For Christ already paid the price so that you could live in everlasting righteousness. You can close your ears, you can bat your eyelids, but when the day of judgment comes, don't tell me I didn't tell you. You can close your ears, you can say I'm lying, but when you wake up in fire, don't tell me I didn't tell you. Let me put you in a hypothetical situation. Let's say God really is real. Let's say Jesus Christ really did die for your sins. Would it be more risky leaving this place now and dying without knowing him? And now let me tell you that hypothetical uh, situation is true. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thinking that we have all this time. But let me tell you, time is short. Time is running out. We have not got enough, enough time. And when that time comes, and when Jesus comes back again, because he will come again, the Bible says that he will come like a thief in the night. He will come again. But will you be ready? Are you ready for his coming? Will you be ready to stand before Jesus? Will you be ready? That's why we're, we're out here preaching this good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you all can be prepared and ready for his coming. So you can be prepared to know when he comes.
he will come. But not many of us can say what today to give your heart to him to surrender yourself to him come to God today go on your knees and say God if you exist reveal yourself to me and I promise you that those who truly seek him they will find him God is a loving God he will take away all this pain all the burdens all the traumatic experiences which you've had in your life God is real whether you believe him or not we will all have to face God one day on judgment be wise. Those who have ears, let them hear. Be wise. Think about what's going to happen after you die. Because the reality is, many people don't like to talk about death. But we will all face death one day for a man to die once. And after that, it's judgment. The way we live our lives today matters. So make the wise choices. I'm here to tell you, if, if you take anything from this message, I'm here to tell you about the Messiah. His name is Jesus. He came to this world, but the world did not accept him. The world rejected him. And many people reject Jesus to this day. That's why you see many people not Jesus Christ. You'll see Netflix shows like Gay Jesus. You know, the, the word tells us that they hated him first. So if the world hates you, just know Jesus was persecuted prior. All of us, let's all come to the Lord. Because that. My brother Marlo always says tomorrow is not guaranteed. So today is the day of salvation. His mercy is for everyone. But we need to come to realize that the way we're living is not the right way. We should change our ways and follow the Lord. Because He's the truth, the way and the life. He's the only way to eternal life. So let's put up our priorities behind and get right with God. Because now is a real thing. I'm no one to put judgment on anyone. All I can say is a lot of people will go there. But you hearing this message today is another chance for you to change your life, to turn away from your sins, and to follow Christ. One thing that I would suggest. That many people nowadays they follow God because they're scared of they're scared to go to hell or they have fears in their heart. But I was saying you shouldn't follow God because you're scared to go to hell. But you should follow him because he's the he's the path to righteousness. Amen. And he wants us to live with he wants us to live the right way so we can make it into his kingdom. You see God is a loving father. There's only so much you can do for your child. There's only so much that you can do for your child. But God was willing to allow you to get your own free will, to make your own decision. And that's the merciful God that he is. But he's still more than willing to bring you back home. Come home. Come home. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is saying, come home. Don't burn. Don't be punished. He's already paid the price. He's already paid the bail. Sin is the breaking of God's law. And Christ paid the price so that you could have everlasting life. You see, when we're prideful, when we're prideful, we're always looking down at other people. And that's how we don't notice that there's an almighty God above us. An almighty God. When we think we can do everything our way, we end up not knowing about yours way. That's the name of the Father. Time is running out. The Bible is one of the best historically preserved books. Archaeologists are still using it today to find locations. How can you doubt the, the authenticity of the scriptures? Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you now, time is of the essence. Time is due to run out. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him 
shall not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says that my people die due to a lack of knowledge. If you lack knowledge in a test, you'll fail the test. Life is a test. Get the right knowledge before you lose it. Tell me, if you lack knowledge in a test, will you not fail the test? Life is a test. Gain the right knowledge before you lose it. Amen. Gain the right knowledge before you lose it. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? 